a question about the dorsal fin too. Is it collagen or cartilage or both? Collagen. Collagen. Okay, yes. that's very fun. Um, Ask it, is it is pure cartilage or is there fi some fibro, I mean, pure collagen? It's fibrous, fibrous. Tissue, but not cartilage. Not no. Is that true for all cetaceans or? As far as I know, yes. The dorsal, like bottlenose, collagen? Yeah, no, no cartilage, collagen, yeah. fibrous tissue. Fibrous connective tissue. Fibrous That's the way I've tissue. described it. And exactly. Are yeah. there any other cetaceans where we see fin collapse? Dorsal fin. Mm. Dorsal fin. Maybe occasional damage. You see some blue power. whales occasionally that, I don't know, I've, I've, I've done Cascadia with their blue whale catalog and you see some whales without dorsal fins on them at all. Mm. And whether they got chewed off by killer whales or... There is one I remember matching a finless whale to a whale with a fin and in the picture that had the fin in it, it looked like there is a crease at the bottom of the fin, like maybe it got smashed under something else. And I don't know if it killed tissue or whatever, but it, and the next picture of the whale, it was a very clean, didn't look That's chewed true. off or anything. So have you ever seen energy. collapse yeah. in the wild? Yeah, no, yeah. yes, yes, yeah. there are some, yeah. But, I mean, for what, one to five percent? Uh, it's a full collapse. I'm not talking about probably less than one percent. Probably less than one percent. Yeah. Uh, Bering Sea and Gulf of Alaska, there are a lot of whale, a lot of resident type whales out there. And you don't see too many, and it's kind of half of them look like they're on their way out. Anyway, and other others are just not ah, right. Yeah, there's up in the False Pass area, Eastern Aleutians. There's a regular transient that we've been seeing for years that has a collapsed dorsal, and whether that was. You know, again, those are gray whale killers, so that might have been an injury, you know, colliding yeah. the fin with a heavier sure. body or something. Is like it that. always males who have it, or you ever see females? Mm -hmm. I've seen a couple little juveniles with collapsed fins really? and, um, up there in the Bering, but I don't, I don't know if it was either. Yeah. yeah. One of them definitely had a spinal issue, but I'm not sure if that's from prop damage or... I don't know, it just, or, uh, you know, being unhealthy when they're young and then maybe getting over it. Yeah, plus that it may also be uh, a, a cause for injury. Mm -hmm. Now, like in the past, about 25% of whales in the northern residents had uh, a bullet wound. And that, you know, if, if, if then scar tissue and it weakens too much, that may also cause a fear. Yeah, it can much. deteriorate a little bit too. Yeah. I mean, a lot of those G's, yeah, if you look at Frank Gisborne's pictures of the northern residents that come out here, a lot of those G's all seem like they've been nipped up, like people or other whales have been, you know, raking them or something, but biting the tip of their dorsal and, and then their dorsal fin kind of deteriorates a little bit. Hmm. So, they, yeah, there is a bunch of northern resident bulls that always seem like they got or being a little too pushy or something. Dave, and ask <laughs> uh, John Jett and myself in our paper use the number less than 1%. you think that's a decent estimate? I think so. Yeah. Because yeah. Yeah. the few that are well documented are are like the couple bulls in Prince William Sound that that collapsed shortly after the Exxon Valdez right. oil spill. Mm -hmm. And that might have just been poor health, and they but they stuck around for a while. Right. So sometimes you can kind of tell if, if it's a whale and pull, pour, you know, a whale that's going to get a peanut head and it's fit, it is going to start to collapse. Yes. Yeah. And you can usually tell the ones that are poor health, but yeah, there are, are a couple, few others out there bopping around that are, you know, look like an injury happened a long time ago and they just get on with life as they, you know. That picture of K-17 has just floating. I think it's... Oh, here. Like this was my favorite whale, and that was the day he died. And you see, here's the blowhole, and you see that head. sunken yeah. area behind the neck. And every time he came up, his fin would just, you know, lean mm -hmm. because he was dehydrated, probably. So there was right. less uh, tissue uh, firmness. So dehydration might explain. Yeah, the well, collapse I think in I think for captivity, that there are a, a number of reasons. Uh, one maybe pattern swimming. Which, well, that they we're, we're talking about reasons for fin yeah. collapse or for collapse. So, so I think there's several possible reasons. One maybe pattern swimming. You know, in the wild, of course, they they may 
turn, eh, chasing fish and everything, but it will be random. And most of the time you just swim straight, so there is a, a flow of water on both sides of the fin. But in captivity, usually you have a preferred swimming pattern, like clockwise or counterclockwise, and, and they have to turn constantly because of the, the shape of the tank. And so there is a one-sided pressure on the fin, much more than, than the other way, that's one. Second, uh, captive orcas rest a lot at the surface so that the fin isn't weightless, but gravity pulls on the fin. Third, um, I think they are kept, at least in some parks, in water that's warmer than here. And of course, when they are, the fin is up in the air, it's warmer. Or the sunlight and they, too, Yeah, and they, if they eat, because they normally uh, extract their fluids from their food, because they don't drink, but they basically need fresh water as much as we do. They extract it from their food. So, and a lot of captives eat less in captivity than in the wild, either because they have less physical exercise, and second, because uh, it, they're exposed to higher temperatures, and so they will actually extract less fluids so they may be just at a, a lower hydration state as the wild killer whales. What about dead fish or frozen fish? Would they have less fresh water than a live fish? Any way of knowing that? I don't know. By visually inspecting the fish, I can tell you that they look wrinkly when you're shoveling smelt from a bucket after it's been frozen and then you're just transferring it, it, feel, it feels... Less uh, firm. Probably. Less firm. Uh, less wet. Less wrinkly, more wrinkly. Yeah, yeah, so that means that there are f well, fewer fluids in those yeah. fish. Yeah. Right. Although I've seen that sea world, they also sometimes with fresh water, Pump it you into know, the hose the, the whales mm -hmm. and they maybe... I, but I don't know because whales won't be used to swallowing water. Mm -hmm. They may like the feel, but I don't know if they swallow. They've taught, I know Tilikum, they've taught to drink from a, mm -hmm. a cup or a hose or something. Okay. But, uh, so, so, so dehydration could leave the thing collapse. Let me ask you a question about the, I thought most of them circled counterclockwise. I thought that was the more common, but I, I didn't realize some go clockwise. Has there been any effort to determine those that go clockwise lean left, and those that go counterclockwise lean right, or I haven't looked or? at that. I, I don't know, because I never recorded what yeah. their... Uh, of course, you could look up the fin collapse uh, direction from, from the photos, but I don't know what the preferred traveling... have to correlate if that were a yeah. factor, right? if that were, definitely, yeah. yes. Okay. And, uh, and then the last thing is a, a small genetic factor, and that is that you see in, in the wild, 90, 90, 99 plus percent has a straight fin. But here, with the distances they travel and the hunting they have to do, they are basically all athletes. But in captivity, just like people, some people don't exercise, but they still yeah, have a, a well-proportionate muscular body, and others get pudgy and fat and, and are not muscular. So. Uh, where Katina and Gudrun, for example, led the same life, uh, Gudrun was more muscular and streamlined than Katina was or is. So I think there's also just the, the personal build eh, of a whale. But if, you know, in the wild, because they all have their exercise, that wouldn't be a factor. Wouldn't be factor. But if you don't exercise at all, then that may may be more clear. And what about general health? Because we saw these uh, exon whales, after they became sick from the toxins, their fin collapse. Could fin collapse in captivity be a sign of general subpar health in and of itself? Or an immune issue? Well, I think that, um, yeah, there have been some captives that had really chronic conditions, like high arc head bronchiectasis, which is a, is, is a sort of um, in, uh, inflammation with pus uh, forming in, in lung cavities, and, and you cannot really... And, and, and then just... The, 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 yeah, the, the foci with that um, 
increase and gradually, gradually you get less and less uh, lung tissue that can actually, you know, absorb uh, oxygen. But apart from that, most death in captivity, what, what I remember is that it's discovered quite late. Because you imagine in the wild, the survival of the whale rests with their being, with their pod. So if they get sick, they may quit hunting because they don't have the energy for it. But they'll continue to swim with them. I mean, by the time a whale really can't keep up with the pod anymore, it's very close to death. So it's, it's an instinct, it's not a word that I would like, but it's almost inborn, just, you know, you go on as long as you can. And you only stop when you really can no more. So usually, uh, what Jeff also told me, uh, trainers that know the whales very, very, very well may see, well, that whale is just not as, you know, as, as quick to respond. And it may be because the whale is cross, but if it's just a little sluggish or doesn't really accept the food as eagerly as normal, immediately they, they call in the vet and let the, whale, let the whale be checked up and that sort of thing. And there are animals that, you know, between the first sign of illness and death, there was like less than 48 hours. Yeah. So they usually tend to just, their mentality is, go on until you can't anymore. When they stop hunting, do other animals try to share their food with them? Yeah. Astrid, I'm going to sign this part of the tape off because I'm running out of battery, but thank yeah. you very much for this great interview. Okay.